In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you. Good morning on this rather chilly morning. We come together to thank God, to praise God. We also know that we need God's ongoing forgiveness and strength. So let's pause for a moment. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. And let us pray. Keep your family safe, O Lord, with unfailing care, that relying solely on the hope of heavenly grace, we may be defended always by your protection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of Genesis. Now the serpent was the most cunning of all the animals that the Lord God had made. The serpent asked the woman, did God really tell you not to eat from any of the trees of the garden? The woman answered the serpent, we may eat of the fruit of the trees in the garden. It is only about the fruit of the tree in the middle of the garden that God said, you shall not eat it or even touch it lest you die. But the ser serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. No, God knows well what the moment you eat of it. Your eyes will be opened and you will be like God's. You know what is good and what is evil. The woman saw that the tree was good for food, pleasing to the eyes and desirable for gaining wisdom. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And she also gave some to her husband, who was with her, and he ate it. Then the eyes of both of them were opened, and they realized that they were naked. So they sewed fig leaves together and made loincloths for themselves. When they heard the sound of the Lord God moving about in the garden at the breezy time of the day, the man and his wife hid themselves from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The responsorial psalm, blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Blessed is he whose fault is taken away, whose sin is covered. Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Then I acknowledged my sin to you. My guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. For this shall, ever, for this shall every faithful man pray to you in time of stress. Though deep waters overflow, they shall not reach him. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. You are my shelter my, from distress. You will preserve me with glad cries of freedom. You will ring me around. Blessed are those whose sins are forgiven. Alleluia, 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 
Open our hearts, O Lord, to listen to the words of your Son. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus left the district of Tyre and went by way of Sidon to the Sea of Galilee into the district of the Decapolis. And people brought to him a deaf man who had a speech impediment and begged him to lay his hand on him. He took him off by himself away from the crowd. He put his finger into the man's ears and spitting, touched his tongue. Then he looked up to heaven and groaned and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And immediately the man's ears were opened. His speech impediment was removed, and he spoke plainly. He ordered them not to tell anyone, but the more he ordered them not to, the more they proclaimed it. They were exceedingly astonished, and they said, He has done all things well. He makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. The Gospel of the Lord. All this week we have been reading from the book of Genesis, the wonderful story of creation, of how God has, has created all things and ultimately created us human beings. And then the ultimate gift, he gave us the free will to do what we want. And of course, while a real blessing, we know it can be a real curse. And we know that in the Garden of Eden, Eve and Adam betrayed that free will and basically did what they wanted to do, which was exactly what God told them not to do. And so we know that it would have been very nice to have always lived in that spirit of simplicity, naivete, or whatever you want to call it. But unfortunately, we have the sin of original sin, we call it, the tendency to do what we want. And of course, we know that choices need to be made. And of course, we have all kinds of things to choose from. And we can always rationalize into doing whatever we want. And we know it isn't always what we should do. And so that's very serious, and we know that it's very difficult at times to make that decision in some issues. Others are more clear, of course, like killing somebody or the really biggies. But we know that in some of the everyday things, it, we do have to stop and think, what really is the right thing that I should do and not just what is convenient for me or for what I like. And of course, you remember perhaps, I think we're all old enough to have remembered the Flip Wilson show, the comedy show. And he, when he played the role of Geraldine, his famous response for things that he did that were dumb, that he should not have done, he said, the devil made me do it. And of course, we know the devil doesn't make us do anything, but we know that he can sure tempt us. And so we do need to make the choices. And so that's where the difficult part comes, especially in some of the day-to-day -day issues that we face. And I'm sure that those of you who are parents, you can certainly understand from God's viewpoint how that all works. I'm sure that you agonize sometimes knowing what your children should do and what really would be for their good, but they make other decisions and of course they pay the price. So as parents, I'm sure you've been down that road. You wished, prayed that your children might do otherwise and you might have counseled them otherwise, but they did what they wanted to do. And so we know that it is an issue of making choices, not just for what is convenient or for comfort, but really, what should I be doing? And the gospel, of course, is a wonderful story as well. They're all wonderful. 
But the gospel story reminds us how we are to hear what God wants us to do. And of course, there is that song, and I will not sing it. As you know, I'm not the best singer. But at any rate, it goes something like, open my eyes, Lord, that I may see. Open my ears, that I may hear. And so like Jesus cured this man from being deaf and, if not, and having a speech impediment, we know we need to listen, to listen to what God is telling us. And where and how do we do that? The reading today, what did Jesus do with this gentleman? He took him away from the crowd, away from the crowd. Because again, we know that our day-to-day -day lives are bombarded with all kinds of things. Even though during this pandemic, we're at home more than we probably are used to, but we still have the TV, we have the computer, we have the phone, we have all kinds of things to distract us. And so we know that we need to come away from the crowd and really in prayer as we are attempting to do this morning at this liturgy, we open our eyes, open our ears that we may hear what is God asking us. And we know in those moments of prayers Sometimes all kinds of distractions bombard us. But maybe those distractions themselves are an opportunity for prayer. Those may be the things we need to address. Those may be the things we need to pray for. And so we need not be afraid of them, certainly not to entertain them and delay them, but to know that those are moments of prayer. And so as we read these beautiful readings, we're reminded that we do need to make choices. We have a free will, the, God, the gift that God gave to us. But in that process that we would pray, as that song goes, open my eyes, Lord, that I may see. Open my ears that I may hear. Trusted in God's providence and God's great love for us, we pre present our needs and our petitions that the ears of Christians everywhere may be opened by God's grace to his saving word. Let us pray to the Lord. That civic leaders may be guided by the Holy Spirit in their efforts to protect life from conception through natural death. Let us pray to the Lord. That those who suffer from addictions may find healing in Jesus' merciful touch. Let us pray to the Lord. That members of this faith community may grow in faith, love, and hope through God's providence in our lives. Let us pray to the Lord. That the faithful departed, freed from all sin, may rejoice in the vision of God forever. Let us pray to the Lord. And our special intention for this morning is for Dolores Dodi Moran, who died, and for her and her family, let us pray to the Lord. And for those many needs and prayers we hold in our hearts, let's pause for a moment to rebring them to the Lord. For all of these, let us pray to the Lord. Loving, gracious God, we bring to you these spoken needs, the many others we hold in our hearts, the many others we should pray for. And we ask this through Christ our Lord.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth, work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. And blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine, work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. O Lord, our God, who once established these created things to sustain us in our frailty, grant, we pray, that they may become for us now the sacrament of eternal life through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts and let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word through whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. <clears throat> You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity 
together with Francis, our Pope, Michael, our Bishop, all the clergy, and all who serve your people. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles, Saint Eugene de Manzanade, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously, grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope in the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Let us offer one another some sign of God's peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. And Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. And behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world, and blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Christ, the body of Christ, Amen. the body of Christ. Amen. The body of. 
of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. Amen. The body of Christ. 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 The communion antiphon from Psalm 107. Let them thank the Lord for his mercy, his wonders for the children of men, for he satisfies the thirsty soul and the hungry he fills with good things. <clears throat> and let us pray. O oh God, who have willed that we be partakers in the one bread and the one chalice, grant us, we pray, so to live that made one in Christ, we may joyfully bear fruit for the salvation of the world through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Our Mass is ended. Let us go in peace, glorifying God by our lives. And thank you for joining us on this cool day, and have a great weekend and a warm weekend. <clears throat>